Hey, yo, what's up, doers? It's your boy, Happy Chappy. Welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial. Look it, you guys are obsessed with villager trading halls. So on this episode, I'm gonna show you how I built my trading. It's powered by potatoes and has other farms too along the side of it. And it incorporates the villager curing system that I have that absolutely makes it an OP villager trading hall system. But this is how I built it. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do for this farm is we need to find your plot of land and we're going to start on the corner so that way you guys can obviously figure out where you're going to put this in your own world so that it just makes it easier to place it. So what we're going to do is we're going to place down our corner block for the wall and what we're going to do is we're going to count a five block space and place another block. So that is five blocks in between each one and then we're going to do that again and you're going to do that five times in total. And then what we're going to do is we're going to actually make these walls four high and then run the row across the top as well so that way you know you can make it a complete wall and once you have that done this is what you should have here we'll decorate this wall afterwards so that way you guys can kind of do it however you want to but now what we're going to do is we're actually going to take our stairs and we're going to run a row of stairs along the inside here this is what we're going to be placing our water in and then we're going to turn it and go one two three four and then turn again and run it all the way down and complete yourself a little box here. Okay, once you have your wall and your first little box done, what we are going to do is we're going to step it out one and then up one like so and run an entire row down all the way to the end. These do not have to be out of netherite either. These can be your decorative. And then starting right here from the center, what we're going to do is we're going to leave a three block gap, but we're going to run a row this way. And you want to make that eight long in total. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then do the same thing right here as well, leaving your three block, block, block gap. Now what you want to do is in between these stairs here, you want to fill this in with your dirt blocks. And then on the top here, so where we created this little eight long gap with the three block gap in between it, what we're going to do is we're going to make an eight by eight plot of land. Now you can make this bigger if you want, but I mean, eight by eight in my survival world has pretty much, or two eight by eights, I should say, has pretty much filled up four or five double chests in just a few episodes of playing around with the farm. Okay, once you have your two eight by eight plots of land done, what you can do is you can close these in, run your rows all the way down, and now we can step it down and repeat this on this side over here that is why i was saying you can make this basically as big as you want because you can make this wider if you do want to put more villagers in here and obviously have a bigger more efficient crop farm or you can leave it like this if you would like to so we will step this down pull out our stairs and then run our stairs all the way down to the end here run it around with your three block gap here as well and then turn it and with that done, we can fill the inside here with our dirt blocks. Once you have this done, just repeat the same wall thing on the other side now to complete the entire farm. And once you are complete, this is what you should have so far. So you should have your two upper plots of crop here with your two side ones. You can make these bigger if you want. We are going to be planting sugarcane here, but let's say you wanted to do melons and just kind of make your own little automated melon farm using pistons. You could definitely widen this to about four or five blocks and definitely fit the flying machine up there and get that done. Now, right here on the upper crop, on one side, you want to place down a solid block and then do the same thing on the other two as well. So one block in. This is where our villagers are going to be standing. Now, what you want to do is you want to run your walls out and around this entire area. And you want to close one side in like so. And then repeat this on the other side, but leaving a gap over this side here. So you want these to be opposite from each other. You also want to wall this into as well so that way the villager cannot obviously escape and then fill in these lower ones with whatever blocks that you want. Now I like to use walls or fences because obviously nothing is going to spawn on top of those if you do leave them there. Now we're going to build this up and out three blocks so that it overhangs like so and do the same thing on the other side. Uh, one more so that is what it should look like. 
And now, in order to till these crops and obviously have them, you know, turn into farmland, what we need to do is we need to knock out this block here and place in a piece of stairs, just like so. We'll do the same on this side and the same on these corners too as well. And once you have that done, you're just going to actually fill these stairs with a water source. And with that water source in place, you can now till all of these soil here. So that way you can actually plant your crops. As you can see, everything here is starting to turn into wet farmland. And now we're just going to repeat that on this side. Okay. And with that complete, this is what you should have here. Now what we're going to do is you can fill these trenches here with water too as well. And then you can till this soil too as well, allowing you to plant whatever crops that you would like down here. And then just obviously repeat that too on this side here. Okay, now we're going to get the fancy stuff done. So once we are complete, we should have all of our crops done like so. Now we're gonna think about getting our villagers in place. So we have our villager who's going to be standing right here on this plot or this square. We want right in front of him to be a hopper. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to come down and we're going to come down underneath here. So right here is where the villager is going to be standing in between all of these fence gates. So we're going to place a hopper here and then do the same thing on the other side for this villager. So there's the fences. There's where the water source is hopper. Now we can go back up top, remove this block, place another hopper going into it. Same thing on the other side as well. And then you're going to place down a rail with a hopper buying cart on top. Remove the rail from underneath it. Take your trap doors, whichever ones that you are going to use. Place one above it and then another one here in front of it and turn it up like so. That is what you should have. So you want to repeat this on this side too as well. So that is rail, minecart, remove the rail. Trap door, trap door and turn it up. Now opposite of this, what you're going to do is you're going to place down a composter. So you do lose a little bit of crops, but is like I said, is completely okay. Same thing on the other side too, as well. And now what you want to do is you want to use your minecart system and just run your villager, your first villager anyways, up and into this plot of land. So that way he can take up the farmer's trade. Now, as you can see, he does want to try and jump on top of this and get out. So what you do want to do is you want to put a solid block just somewhere above it like so. So that way he doesn't have any chance of doing that. And then repeat it on this side here too as well. So we're going to place down the composter, put in our solid block so he has no way to jump out and then get our villager in place. Once you have these guys in place here, now is your time to just throw these guys each a stack of potatoes. So that way you can see they will pick them up eventually and even start to plant them yourself. So that way you can obviously just have this potato instead of carrots or anything else. You can do whichever crop you want, but I did potatoes for mine and we'll talk why in a minute here. Okay, now with your crops and everything in place and your two farmers now in place, what you want to do is run your minecarts up the side. You can remove this block here and then drop your next villager in place here. You do want to make sure that you get a roof above him like so. And then do the same thing for this side, villager in place. Make sure he's got a roof so we cannot jump out anyway. And then just to keep these guys protected, you can decorate this however you want. You can put a roof on it, which is definitely, definitely a good idea. But for sure, you want to make the walls at least two blocks high. So that way these guys get protected from any outside zombies or whichever that are roaming around here. Now down on this side here, now you have the option to plant whichever crop that you would like. But I'm going to be doing sugar cane. So in order to do that, I'll show you how to set this up. So you're going to want to actually run your water all the way down on both sides. And now because sugar cane uses grass, obviously change it back into grass. Now, in order to get the most out of your sugar cane, what you're going to do is you're actually going to just come in one block and you're going to place down a slab and then fill it with water. Then what you're going to do is you're going to count a two block gap. You're going to do the same thing, place down your slab, fill it with water, and then just keep repeating that all the way down to the end here. So two block gap. And once you have that done, as you can see, because we are odd number, you have to do that at the end. Now you have the option of planting your sugar cane in the most efficient way that you possibly can. And with everything complete, this is the shell of your trading hall here. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to head down and underneath and we'll get to the good parts about why we have the potato farm up here above us. 
Now, underneath the farm here, what we're going to do is we're going to put down a double chest under this first hopper. We'll do the same thing on this side too as well. Then we'll place down another couple chests staggered this way. We'll do the same thing so that they're even on both sides. So we'll do double chest, yep, double chest above it. Then we'll take our hopper, run it in there, hopper, run it in there. You can do this basically however you want, but we're going to be kind of be closing this in. And underneath these hoppers, or right here at the end, what you're going to do is you're just going to create a little box like so, and then leave this open or leave this little gap open here with a little two or one block gap, because this is where we're going to be putting some villagers once we do get them cured. And now on my world, I have the actual inside wall of the farm. On the inside. So it's two blocks deep like so, but you can do these walls however you want. If you want them to be on the outside so that you have more room in here, you can go for it. But I'm just going to run a row of blocks down on the inside so that way it kind of identifies where the inside of the barn or wherever the inside of the trading hall is going to be. I can't believe I just said barn as if these villagers are going to be animals. And now along this wall, what you want to do is you basically just want to, you know, put a double wall up, give a block gap, so that way this is where our villagers are going to stand. And once you are complete, this is quite literally the frame of our villager trading hall, all set and done. So we have the inside here where we can put a max of 24 villagers. So 24 trades, so 12 on this side and then 12 on that side too as well. And then in the middle here, what we're going to do is we're going to have our villagers. So we're going to have, these walls are going to go away. We're going to have a max of possibly, or a minimum, sorry, of four farmers in here with a maximum of at least eight. Now with everything done there, like we said, what we're going to do is we're going to pick a side. It does not matter which side at all. Well, I mean, obviously in your world it does because there's going to be a front and a back to this thing. And on this end, we are going to be building our villager curing station. So we're actually going to build it literally right here in this gap instead of putting a back door on it. So it's going to go right there in the center of the farm. And if you guys have not seen how to build this, I will put a link right now in the video so that way you guys can see it. You guys can jump over when you are finished this video and see how that is done. Okay, once you have your villager curing station set up and ready to go and you have your villager breeder somewhere off the backside a little bit more, I would say a little bit farther away than this from the farm. What you're going to do is somewhere on the inside of this farm, so even if it's over here, you're just going to place down a solid block with a button on. Now what you want to do is you want to dig this out and down and we're going to run it backwards and over to this section here that I have carved out in the farm we're gonna run a redstone signal under and around and over to this section here we're then gonna dig this out place two powered rails going down and into each other like so with a solid block sticky piston and another solid block like so you want to place a redstone torch on top of a solid block underneath it so that way it extends the sticky piston out and over this rail here and then take your redstone signal and run it going into that block you don't want it to run beside it you want it to run into the block like so and now you can fill all of this rest of this stuff in anyways whatever you do though do not block this signal that is going down so either place a piece of glass or a slab there and as you can see when we hit this button we are good to go now all we're going to do is just surround this little section here in some glass so as you can see everything is good and with that complete we can now send out our only minecart we need it should wrap around the system here and collect a villager yep the villager will go down here stop and prepped and be ready for us and now inside our farm, all we have to do is just press this button. And we have our villager in place. Now, before we go any further than this, what you want to do is you want to make sure you have mine carts all in the bottom here with your splash potions of weakness in this upper dispenser here. Now, all you have to do is just place down your lectern. As you can see, he will start to pick up the trade. You can cycle this as many times as possible until you get the trade that you do want. Once you get it, so let's say you were looking for a mending book. This is exactly what you would want right here. You're going to want to trade with him at least once in order to lock it in. Flip your lever exposing him. 
Once he turns, you can put the zombie back down, hit him with the splash potion of weakness, a golden apple, and then just wait until he is cured. Once he is cured, all you have to do is run your rails to whichever section here that you want your villager to be in. Once you're ready to get him into his little spot here, as you can see, you can just, you can wait for him to turn. You don't have to do it right away, but you can do it right away if you prefer that. Like if you just want these guys to go into their little spots and change there so that you can carry on with your next villager and then repeat this process, making it as fast and efficient as possible. As you can see, there's a piercing. Eh, sure, we'll take a flame, lock it in, change them, smack them throw apples at him and set him off and into place now if you're not sure that you're going to get the discount that you want you may have to do it you know two three four times in order to get the one you know the single one discount so this is where the golden apples and the splash potions really come into play if you see in my other worlds i've set up hoppers with chests on top of it and i just make stacks and stacks of these once i get the gold farm going but once you have your villagers in place, all you have to do is just place down whichever workstation in front of them if you want. Because you have locked the trades in with these guys, you actually don't even need the workstations. But it's kind of nice to have so you can see, you know, what they do and which trades they're going to get. This is not what this is all about. What this is all about is what's above us right here. So what you're actually going to do is you're going to get your villagers in place. And you want to make, like I said, a minimum of four farmers. So once you have this guy on the farmer trade, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you get the potato one or whichever crop that you do have up there. So if it's beetroots or whichever, I don't even know. So what you want to do is you want to at least trade once with them. So that way you lock in the trade and then turn him into a zombie. Now the thing with the villagers though and this potato thing, you're going to have to do it two or three times. So put him back down, splash him wait for him to turn this process with four villagers literally took i think it was two and a half hours maybe three hours but it takes quite a while and probably four apples and four splash potions to get each of these guys down to the one potato or two potato tray as you can see if you leave them in the mine carts once these guys do change they kind of do this weird thing where they get stuck in the ground and if you move the mine cart they're stuck there forever. I don't know if this is intentional. I don't know if I sign out and sign back in, if this is going to change, it probably will, but uh, keep that in mind, keep that in mind. And once you've got all your farmers in place here, so your potato farmers, obviously with your discounted trades, you are now set and ready to go. So as you can see, just from building that and getting our villagers in place without even having to use any game rule, we already have over a stack of potatoes on each one. So that would be a stack of emeralds if you had all of these guys down to their single potato trade. So as you can see there, we're down to 20. So it's going to take a few more in order to get him down to the one trade, which I mean, like I said, it's no problem. This whole game is a grind anyways. And now what you want to do from here basically is you need to close this in. Now on my world, I left both the back and the front wide open, which I, like I said, if you do this setup, I wouldn't do. So you're just going to want to take some, you know, get a little creative on however you want to make these walls. Now on the front here, what you're going to want to do is you're just going to want to put a two wide door in like so. And then right in the middle of the door, you're going to carve down at least three blocks and then take some carpet and place down some carpet in this hole all the way to the top like so. Now by doing that, you quite literally don't even have to put a gate in this system. That right there is enough to make the mobs, you know, trip out and think that I'm going to fall down if I walk through there because mobs in Minecraft are stupid. Now what you can do is you can decorate the front however you want. So you can do something like this if you would like to. You can do the trap doors on the reverse like I did. So that way you can kind of have like a trap door outdoor feeling like so. As you can see there. So we just place them on top of each other and close them up. You may want to build stairs or something going up to the outside. <clears throat> Okay, you may want to do some sort of build out on the front here so that way it kind of looks like, you know, the one from my world. But that is where Minecraft comes into play, you know, get creative, kind of do your own thing, kind of be your own builder, be your own creator. I've given you now the structure that I use. So like I said, these guys will rain potatoes down on the rest of the farm for you to trade into emeralds. 
from these guys here once they oh i must have smacked somebody yep clearly did and then line all these tradesmen up here on the side once you get done fill this in with some slabs so that way you don't see the dirt make sure you light this area up too really well so as you've seen in my world which we'll actually switch over to Okay, so this is the original design that I came up with. We're not on the survival world here. We're on just one of the creative worlds that I like to play on. And we basically have the exact same setup. So if we go around here, as you'll see with the black stone, we have our walls with the sugarcane and everything in place. On the back here or the front, this is where I would put your villager curing station. So I used to have it here kind of offset a little bit but I deleted it so that way I can put it over there for some reason I'm not sure why probably for the video I think but I had it here just off the back side so that I could run my rails up and in so that is what my front doors looked like if we go to the inside here okay this is what I had the inside looking like I haven't even done any of this yet on my survival world all I've done is put in the floor but basically yeah this is the same setup just with a little bit of decoration and some lighting so you can see here i have the chest set up the same way all filled with the potatoes from all these you know farmers up above us when i was starting to build the iron farm and everything over there we have these guys here all discounted down not like they are on the survival world because obviously why would i do that on a creative world a little step out here too as well so that way you can kind of have more villagers if you would like to crying obsidian basalt but like I said, get creative with it. It's your world. Don't copy mine. But that is it right there, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want some angles of what all of this kind of looks like here, this is what it looks like. So we've got step ups. As you can see, I have stairs here that go up so I can get to my sugar cane if I need to. This is the same design on the other world too as well. The front door is just the front door. Like I said, you can get creative by putting the thing a few blocks out there. You know, this is why I set up the Reddit, but nobody shares any pictures. I probably don't even have it set up properly. Anyways, that is it right there, you guys. So as you can see by my other world, you know, this is where the build out would be with the front door on this side. Completely up to you on how you guys want to design it. Completely up to you. That's where Minecraft comes into play. This is, this is, use your imagination. So if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Consider subscribing too as well. Stop by the website shophappychappy.com. We've got some new merch that just dropped too as well for you guys. I don't even know what to call it. When you think of GOAT, you think of greatest of all time. No, 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 no. Gaming on another tier, boys. Gaming on another tier. We've got four or five designs up there for you guys. You guys can go crazy on them if you would like to. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all your support. And I will definitely see you guys on the next one. Peace.